What's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are taking a look at the Vancouver Canucks. There's a lot of stuff going on in Vancouver. We're hearing a lot of rumors about this team. Brock Besser has re-signed with the team. He signs an extension. We'll go over that as well. So let's get right into it. So the first part is really the news out of Vancouver right now. They, reset, they brought in Andre Kuzmenko from the KHL. And they also bring a guy returning from last season, Brock Besser, signing a three-year deal, $6.65 million per season. This is a good contract for the Canucks and for Brock Besser. It's kind of a prove-it deal. Takes him until he's 28 years old, walks him straight into unrestricted free agency. This is his big test. This is Brock Besser's, can he stay healthy? Situation. I mean, that's really the biggest concern in terms of giving him a long-term contract. Obviously, there is the sense that he he believes he's healthy enough. He's willing to take a chance on himself saying, listen, I'll give you a three-year deal. I want to prove that I'm healthy, that I can play. And at 28 years old, this kid's probably going to bank in on a big paycheck. I'm really hoping for the best here for Brock Besser. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But good news there. All that trade chatter for Besser, at least for now, is over. So obviously that leads to other guys on the roster coming up more often. Um, this is from Irfan Jafar. The Canucks will look to move Tanner Pearson, Connor Garland, and Jason Dickinson this summer and to see if Oliver ekman Larson will consider waiving his no-movement clause. I think that's asking for a lot considering he just came to Vancouver last season. He's only played one season in Vancouver but you have to wonder you know with a bad season this year and maybe the fans turning on him maybe that is the best decision for him and the franchise um, that's something that I think there's more to it because of his value what is his value at this point um, all those things being considered that is something to look at this is kind of interesting here from Rick Dollywall. He said that the Nazem Kadri, uh, Nazem Kadri's name was on the Canucks list a few weeks ago. And obviously winning the Stanley Cup and proving all the haters wrong kind of just led to that sentiment. Uh, Nazem Kadri to the Canucks would be huge. I mean, just considering how good that group would be, you have Pedersen, Horvat, Kadri, all his centers. It realistically doesn't make sense, but the idea that that's thrown out there, I think most teams have Kadri on their radar. I mean, if you're if Kadri's not on your list, your general manager should be fired. But with that said, that is something to mention. Now, this has definitely picked up steam here over the last week or so, and as the latest on Mikey D. Pietro, um, and this is again from Dolly Wall. He says the Montreal Canadiens have shown expressed interest in goaltender Michael DiPietro. Now it seems like Seelovs has kind of overtaken that second spot there in the goalie order, um, which is kind of interesting. Arthur Seelovs, uh, he's 21 years old and was a sixth round pick back in 2019. The Canucks see a lot in this kid and they think he is ready to maybe back up Thatcher Demko next season. Uh, you're looking at their goaltending right now. It's Thatcher Demko, Spencer Martin, and probably C. Lobs. Uh, again, you don't want to rush a goaltender like that into the National Hockey League. But again, who's going to play in Abbotsford next season? Who's going to get more starts? Mikey DiPietro or Arthur C. Lobs? And as of right now, I think you know, Patrick Alvin and Rutherford are more confident in Arthur's C. Lobs. So kind of an interesting development there. And like I said, keep an eye on the Habs in that regard. Uh, looking at Mikey DiPietro. Oh, we already talked about that, Brock Besser. Now comes the more interesting topic, and that is JT Miller. We're hearing a lot of interesting stuff. They're gauging the market on uh, what's available. They've definitely taken some offers that are pretty intriguing, but at this point, the number, you know, the value just hasn't been there. And that was the problem at the deadline. You know, the Canucks really weren't seeing what they wanted, and they said, all right, we're just going to wait till the offseason. And that's kind of where we're at now. Um, you know, and again from Dollywall, he says JT Miller is believed to want over eight million dollars per season on his next contract. That's a big ask for JT Miller. I know Canucks fans are kind of saying to themselves, "We want a second overall pick and the fourth, your top four defensemen and your top six forward." And and everybody's like, "Whoa, like hold on a sec." But I think the Canucks are asking for that. I think that is a legitimate ask at this point. I'm just not sure if Vancouver's actually going to get that. But again, I think they're doing their due diligence. 
They're definitely not going to get just a first-round pick, which Benning took flack for trading for JT Miller for a first-round pick from Tampa back in the day. Remember that? Um, so if there's anything you could take consolence in Jim Benning, Jim Benning did whatever you get for JT Miller, you could thank Jim Benning for that move. Um, now, this was also interesting, and this was from uh, Rob Simpson saying the Penguins could be interested um, in JT Miller if they lose Evgeny Malkin. So again, it's more of the domino effect game. If you know, if Pittsburgh loses Malkin, then JT Miller comes in. If throw around the league, I'm trying to think who else. If the Florida Panthers lo 